Let's begin by discussing the anatomy of a blood vessel, including the different layers and the function of each layer. Blood is carried through the body in a network of blood vessels. Arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood towards the heart. The capillaries are the smallest blood vessels and this is where exchange between the blood and the extracellular fluid takes place. The cardiovascular system is made up of the heart which provides a driving force to move blood through the blood vessels. There are three types of blood vessels in the body, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Normally, arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart, however, the pulmonary arteries are the exception. Normally, veins carry deoxygenated blood to the heart, and again, the pulmonary veins are the exception to this rule. Capillaries are found in the tissues, and they are the site of exchange. The blood vessel wall is made up of three layers. The adventitia is the outer layer, the media is the middle layer, and the intima is the internal elastic layer and contains the endothelium. Let's discuss each layer of a blood vessel in more detail, beginning with the intima. This is the internal layer that contains the endothelium. The intima is the innermost layer of an artery or vein and it's made up of the following. Number one, the endothelial lining that's in contact with the blood itself. Number two, underlying connective tissue layer that contains the elastic fibers. And number three, the internal elastic membrane. This is present in the outer margin of the intima. The thickness of the intima depends on the size of the artery. The middle layer of a blood vessel is the media. It contains concentric rings of smooth muscle. And when stimulated by the autonomic nervous system, this smooth muscle leads to vasoconstriction or vasodilation of the blood vessel. These changes in blood vessel diameter through the actions of smooth muscle lead to significant changes in blood pressure. On the outside of the media are collagen fibers which bind it to the intima and the adventitia on either side of it. The outer layer is the adventitia. This is the outermost layer and it's made up of layers of connective tissue. The chief component of the adventitia is the collagen fibers, and these are interconnected with the surrounding tissue and secure the blood vessel in place. The outer layer is typically thicker in a vein as compared to an artery. The following is a clinical note on arteriosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis is a disease that involves thickening and hardening of the wall of arteries. There are different forms of arteriosclerosis, such as coronary artery disease, but they fall into two major forms. Number one, focal calcification, and number two, atherosclerosis. Focal calcification involves the degeneration of smooth muscle in the media layer and the deposition of calcium calcification. Atherosclerosis involves damage to the endothelial lining and the formation of lipid deposits in the media layer of blood vessels. Long-term elevated cholesterol and lipid levels may be involved in the development of atherosclerosis. The treatment for the buildup of atherosclerotic plaques in arteries includes angioplasty and the implant of stents. However, the best treatment remains to be prevention through lifestyle changes and cholesterol-lowering drugs if needed. The following are some of the ways that arteries and veins differ from each other. Typically, arteries transport blood away from the heart and veins transport it back to the heart. Arteries have smooth muscle which can react to nervous system stimulation and hormones and change the diameter of the vessel. Arteries have an elastic recoil and pulse with the cardiac cycle. Veins contain valves which can close to prevent the backflow of blood. Arteries do not have valves. Arteries have thick layers of smooth muscle as well as elastic and fibrous tissue. The largest artery in the body is the aorta. And as larger arteries divide into smaller diameter arteries, the wall becomes less elastic and more muscular. The smallest arteries are called arterioles. 
Meta arterioles are specialized arterioles that connect to either capillaries or the venous circulation. There are three types of arteries in the body, conducting arteries, muscular arteries, or arterioles. Conducting arteries or elastic arteries are the largest. An example is the aorta. These contain more elastic fibers than smooth muscle and therefore can withstand the highest blood pressure in the body. Muscular arteries or distribution arteries deliver blood to the skeletal muscle and organs. These arteries are smaller than conducting arteries and have more smooth muscle in their walls. Arterioles are the smallest arteries in the body and are the main control point for blood flow into the capillary beds. As we mentioned, the capillaries are the smallest blood vessels in the body and they receive blood from arterioles. They are the sites of exchange. And shown in this image is the hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure that leads to the exchange of ions and liquids between the vascular system and the extravascular system. The capillary bed is a site of exchange between the blood and interstitial fluid. They lack smooth muscle and connective tissue. They have a flat layer of endothelium supported by a basement membrane. The four mechanisms that are responsible for the exchange between the capillary and the interstitial fluid are number one, the diffusion of water, lipid soluble materials, and gases. Number two, diffusion through gaps between adjacent endothelial cells. Number three, diffusion through pores in fenestrated capillaries. And number four, vesicular transport by endothelial cells. The capillary beds are the sites of peripheral resistance and blood pressure regulation. Smooth muscle around arterioles modulate blood pressure by changing peripheral resistance. If systemic blood pressure is decreased, neuromodulation of the arterioles causes vasoconstriction, which in turn causes an increase in the overall blood pressure. Normally, the precapillary smooth muscle permits blood flow through the capillary bed to facilitate the exchange of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nutrients. If the systemic blood pressure decreases, the precapillary smooth muscle can constrict to increase the peripheral vascular resistance. Precapillary vasoconstriction will cause an increase in the systemic blood pressure. The following is a clinical note on the blood-brain barrier. The spaces between the endothelial cells that line the capillaries throughout the body allow for drugs to pass between the cells and enter most organs. In the brain, however, the capillaries are lined with tightly packed endothelial cells and a layer of glial cells. This is known as the blood-brain barrier. This protective barrier allows the entry of small hydrophobic molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. It's very selective for the drugs that can pass into the brain. This barrier is decreased or reduced in a few key locations inside the brain, including portions of the hypothalamus, capillaries in the pineal gland, and the membranous roof of both the third and fourth ventricles. The other major blood vessels of the body are the veins. Veins function by carrying blood returning to the heart from the body. They exist in three sizes. The smallest veins are called venules and they receive blood from the capillaries. The medial layer of venules is mostly made up of connective tissue. Medium sized veins are approximately the same size as medium sized arteries. The largest veins in the body are the great veins and the superior and inferior vena cava. The three layers that make up the wall of a vein are the thickest in the large veins. Veins contain valves, unlike arteries. These valves facilitate one-way blood flow. This prevents blood from pooling in the lower extremities due to the effects of gravity. The venules and medium-sized veins of the body contain valves. An example of valve function takes place when standing. While standing, gravity is pulling on the blood returning to the heart in the venous system. The closure of valves can prevent unnecessary backward flow of blood. The following graph depicts the percent blood distribution in the cardiovascular system. The largest percent distribution is in the venules and medium-sized veins. 
This is closely followed by the liver, bone marrow, and skin, and the large veins of the body. The least is in the pulmonary capillaries, the aorta, and the arterioles.